There's a much larger body of evidence to attribute Donald Trump to being a racist. If you look at the totality of Donald Trump and what he said and what he said on the campaign and what he's done as president, I don't think there's any question about his racism, about his bigotry, about his um, appeals to white nationalism. David Duke, what he said about D Donald Trump was essentially uh, proof positive of what Donald Trump has represented and has promoted in this country. And so the, you know, any question about is Donald Trump a racist or, gee, is he, you know, did he really say as whole countries? Come on now. Let's not pretend that we don't know what we know. 313-778-7600. Let's get back to our phone lines. Uh, we got Mark on line six. Hey, Mark, how are you this afternoon? How you doing, brother? I've been waiting. I just listened to the conversation. I'm going to give you a little bit of a little bit of a little bit of a little well, you know how the impeachment process goes. It starts in the House and moves to the Senate. But you've got a Republican-controlled legislature, so um, that's not going to happen. Uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk lately about the 25th Amendment, about getting him out of office because they feel he is mentally unfit to be there. But the Republicans are not going to do this. These are the same guys who kept their mouth shut when he called these predominantly black and brown countries, asshole countries. Absolutely. And I'm walking lockstep with this guy right now. Absolutely. We have to get him out of there. That certainly needs to be done. Thank you for this. No, I, I appreciate the call, man. I mean, you know, people need to understand. I do not hate Donald Trump, and I've been accused of that a few times. One of our frequent callers accused me of hating Donald Trump. I don't hate Donald Trump, but I hate racism. And I hate the lies that have been told in the Oval Office. And I hate the direction that these right-wingers are trying to take this country. And as a process, Donald Trump is going to be criticized because he has been, become a champion of these things. And it is detrimental to this country. It is detrimental to democracy. It is detrimental to the gains that have been made on behalf of equality and fairness and opportunity in this country. People have asked me, why do you still talk about Donald Trump? Because he's still there. And he still represents what he represents. Let me get right back to our phone lines. Uh, let's go to John on line five. Hey, John, good afternoon. How are you? Good afternoon, Russell. Russell's very, very, very excited and very, very knowledgeable for a person that you, you keep a talking to this and carry an inch out of the other side that, that big and very racist up there. Russell, I, I hope you don't use hate in, in, in a manifesto because some of these right wing wackos are saying that you hate, you hate, you hate, you hate, so forth. So you, you're a very much more uh, sophisticated, much more educated man here. So and you just have to put that father word following you in like that. But uh, Russell, I want you to know that down at, at, at Florida, he wanted to get some people down in the Puerto Rico. A lot of them went to Florida. Now, old Jeff Sessions down there got a fight to keep them off, off the voting roll and so forth. He didn't want to stand up and vote. Jeff Sessions got to kind of stop them from getting ready to vote and, 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 and coming up and get uh, the election and so forth. And uh, Russell, I, I think that. You will be a great, you'll be a great uh, auditorium to have some of some African American women and men down in Alabama to come up here and teach these people that they just got to vote and how to vote and so forth. And I think you, you'll be the best auditorium man that can do that. So knowledge is power, and then why we have a, a, a world of knowledge of addiction people and so forth. I think it would be nice if you would do that. I, I know you're, you're playing the school, Russell. But if you can do it, put it off. I appreciate that. John, I always appreciate your thoughts. Thank you, man. People in Alabama know what I appreciate the call. I appreciate your kind words. I love the suggestion. I think that some of our brothers and sisters in Alabama did show the temerity and the courage to do what needs to be done. Of course, when you get a Roy Moore thrown in your face, it's not hard to do what you need to do. Here's a guy who to this very day supports uh, segregation in Alabama. You know, I, I remember when uh, 
David Letterman used to have the top ten list. But I'm gonna bring Micah and uh, ask Ray in this. I remember when David Letterman used to have his top ten list, and they were always funny. And he had a top ten list one time, and it said top ten reasons, uh, no top ten excuses that politicians. <laughs> And one of them was uh, my position on slavery was understood. And, you know, of course, it was funny because it was like, well, why is that issue even coming up? And it was, it, was, it was part of the joke. Well, that's close to the truth right now. You've got a Joe Arpaio down in Arizona. you got a Roy Moore in Alabama. you got these Republican lawmakers and candidates in places across the country who are openly advocating white supremacy, white racism, using stereotypes. And, and horrible uh, 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 racial prejudices to campaign on. And they're getting votes. People are supporting them for having these views. And as, as, I'm, I'm gonna start with you. And the question I have for both of you is, as a young person, as you look at your future, and I want you all both to have great professional careers and get real rich and make a lot of money and get famous and whatever else you wanna do. But in all of that, do you make time in your mind to be politically active and involved as you get old? As you move forward, I should say. Um, yeah, I know. Mostly, since, honestly, since I started working here. Right. As you heard, heard Cliff and these guys, it's like, wait a minute. <laughs> That's good, though. I like to hear that. Yeah, but honestly, I don't... I don't know about the government. I just try to community organizing, that type of thing. Like, right. That's the only thing I know. Like, and that's really where it is. I, I will let you get that phone call. I ask you to call you, Michael. As you look forward, you have a lot of mountains you want to conquer in your career. But is being active and involved in either politics or organizing or just informing the community, is that a part of your plan? Absolutely. Part of my plan is to definitely help out others, bring other people along. Um, so we all can prosper. That's the goal. That's the vision that I have in, at hand. And I know by me being a, a millennial or us being a millennial, we tend not to focus on that as much. And it has to something us as millennials, those who are willing to take that next step and be courageous, got to take it and bring others on board so we can get the focus to where it needs to be. Wonderful. I'll tell you what, I have a lot of very high expectations of you and Miss Azarich y'all. I have no doubt that you all will conquer the world. Just don't forget Uncle Cliff when you get there, all right? Let me get back to our phone lines. 313-778-7600. We still got some time. And uh, as I go down my list, Greg is on line three. Hey, Greg, thanks for calling. Good afternoon to you. Good morning, Mr. Cliff. How are you today? I am doing quite well. Great. Hey, you know, one one thing that did bother concerns me, there's so much talk about Donald Trump that what happened, he becomes a distraction. The young people there, they have to understand that if that Donald Trump, as long as he's pushing and signs bills for a Republican agenda, he will stay where he is. It's the Republican agenda that is the problem. Now, the problem, another thing, too, I know the, the young people right there, I guess they're probably asking, well, what's the difference between Republicans and Democrats historically as far as what they've done for black people and what they've done for working class people? And so that's a message that doesn't get out because I hear especially you see a lot of black Republicans who talk Republicanism. And the first question I have is, well, yeah, if you're a black Republican and you all, if you're, if you have a business that's successful, yes, I understand why you vote Republican. But if you're a person of labor, blue collar, or poor, a, a barely having a job, the Democrats historically have been the party that supports the underclass. Now that's changed over the years since you've got these you know, these corporate Democrats in, and unfortunately, they really kind of jacked the party up. Right. But it's really critical that, that the message gets, I don't understand the difference of the party. And historically, who's been food for, for what groups of people? It was FDR in the 1930s, a Democrat, who pushed for trying to get, get food on the table for 
working class and people out of work. And along with that tradition, you still had, you had Harry Truman, I got issues with Truman. However, he's the one that desegregated the second order, desegregated the middle of the I, I'm, also a, I'm also a fan of Eisenhower. Eisenhower was a Republican yes. who decided it was insane to destroy what the Democrats had placed in, in action for, right, helping right. build a middle class. So he didn't. What, 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 what a great thing about Eisenhower. What did he do? He stopped the nonsense down in Central he High School. He sent those troops down to Little Rock, and, Arkansas. That's, that's, that's right. And also what he did was... He also uh, built the interstate highways, which are good for commerce, okay, yeah. and public goods. And the fact is, the Democrat is this, Greg, and I appreciate the call. I got to take some other calls, and you make some excellent points. Is that so? You know, you know, you know, you know. Democrats and Republicans are Tweedledee and Tweedledum, all right? They are both politicians, both vying for office. They do stand for different things, but I think that the influence of corporate money and big money has taken a toll on both of the major parties. I am more interested in policies and individual initiatives and individual candidates, and what do they stand for? You know, I was having this conversation the other day, and I said, you know what? My favorite mayor ever to vote for was a Democrat, Coleman Young. My favorite governor ever to vote for was a Republican, Bill Milliken. And so what does that say? It says that candidates and parties come and go, but issues and priorities stay the same, and you have to vote that way, not based on whether somebody has DEM or GOP at the end of their name in the voting booth. Let's see if I can sneak in another call or two before they uh, – Make me go to a break. Let's go to Robert, who's on line one. Hey, Robert, good afternoon. How are you doing? Hey, I'm all right. How are you? Good. You know what's worse than a white Republican? A black Republican. A black Republican. <laughs> because I listen to them talk all the time. It just seems like they have so much hatred for themselves. And it's like they talk, do the same talking points that the Republicans do when they always come with excuses to try to justify what Trump do. And for the Republican Congress, these are the same, remember, these are the same people that was in office when Obama was in office. These are the same people that said no to everything that this man tried to do. So what makes you think that these people are about to do anything for this country? or care about the people who doesn't mean. Right. No, not. You are a hey. wise man. I appreciate the call. And you reminded me of something that I wanted to say earlier. And that is, I had major problems with the Republican Party before Donald Trump thought about running for office. This is the party that has been using the Southern strategy to run for office going back to Richard Nixon. And it went through Richard Nixon. It went through both of the, the uh, Bushes. It went through Ronald Reagan for sure. Donald Trump took it to another level. And that is using racism and hatred and divisiveness to win elections and appeal to the lowest element of this country. That residual of racism and hatred and bigotry that just can't let that go. They're too caught. They're, what, what's the term we should They're too lost in the sauce of racism to free themselves and to free their minds. 